when you came to Toronto, you were obviously involved with an Orthodox shul, though a more modern Orthodox shul than many of the downtown synagogues. Yeah. And you and two others, I believe, were the only English-speaking rabbis in the community at the time. Uh, when I came in 39, there was Rabbi Samuel Sachs at Gold Sedek. Rabbi Reuben Sloan oh, right. was still here at, at Call Street right. Synagogue. He, he, was, he was just about to leave. I think he left at the end, uh, June 40. I think so, June 40. And then, or June 41, I'm not sure. Uh, he was having difficulty at the time. And there was the Rabbi Maurice Eisengrath. And then, of course, there were the, the stalwart, scholarly, uh, pre-World War II and pre-World War I Orthodox rabbis, the patriarchs and the scholars. And um, the beauty at the time was there was no sectionalization. I recall that not only did I co-officiate with Rabbi Weinreb and Rabbi Levi, and uh, the other uh, and uh, rab and the other old-time rabbis, but uh, even Rabbi Eisendrath co-officiated with them at funerals and on wedding and at weddings, as long as he put on his yarmulke, and as long as they did their they did their parts. There's a vast difference today. The the, the modern Orthodox rabbi will not co-officiate today uh, with the conservative or, or reform rabbi. All right, let's pick up on that theme. Yeah. You say that their sectionalization was there not is as pronounced then at any rate. It was probably this not. This is a post-World War II right. phenomenon. When, what, what seems to inspire this then? How far post-war is it? What leads to this sort of splitting up in the community? Um, the splitting up the community, it's a, uh, the, um, uh, I would say the, the, the uh, uh, a fanaticism that has come into uh, orthodoxy, whether it's from the Hungarian stream uh, of the past, because in Hungary they were either very religious or very fragoyished, or whether it, it, it was from Poland, I don't know. But, for example, Rabbi Kersner would not permit Rabbi Kelman even to co-officiate at a wedding that he, Rabbi Kelman and I were invited to where it was my second cousin and Rabbi Kelman's c very dear friend he wouldn't allow us up on the beamer to co-officiate at a wedding ceremony now that was unheard of up until uh, world, the end of World War II All right. and a number of years after 